Cool. I'm waiting to go live. There awesome. we are. Okay, going live. Sweet. In town. So we are here. Um, Johnny Travers, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Y'all. Um, um, lovely YouTube live channel that I love so much from my wonderful coach here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are excited to have you, dude. Um, so what is it like? Uh, well, let's let's just get off right into it. Yeah. Yeah. Excited to Lambda. Congratulations, my friend. Thank you, man. Still working on the believing part. <laughs> dude, tell me like three words that come to mind when you reflect on this cycle, this audition cycle. Three words right off the bat. What was this like for you? Uh <laughs> there's so many there's so many things that come to mind um uh enlightening um fun um and tough i'd say those are the top three that come to mind for me personally. amazing yeah i understand um let's help the audience understand so obviously people watching this are here to learn uh, they may have already gone through the audition process and and want to hear about your story uh, they may about to be going through the audition. They may be about to go through it and want to hear kind of like some wisdom or some, you know, but ultimately your story is what we're here for. Gotcha. So let's start at the beginning as far as like when you decided to audition for MFA programs, when did you decide to audition, right? Because tell people a little bit about your background. You know, I know you're sure. in college now, you're getting your bachelor's. Tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, awesome. So, um, so um as Anthony was saying, I'm currently in college. Um, I'm pursuing my, my BA in theater um, and acting emphasis at Fordham University Lincoln Center in New York. Um, and um, I've been at this, um, this MFA audition game for um, well over seven months now. So I started this way back in, um, I thought, I started thinking about it in July, I would say. Um, and it's actually funny because um, for a long time, I was actually, last year, I was thinking about um, pursuing um, uh, a graduate degree, but in, uh, in film and like film directing. And, um, and <laughs> you know, um, I thought that, uh, that in order to gain a more holistic sense of, of the craft, I wanted to um, take a step behind the helm and learn more about uh, directing. But um, then I really did. There was one day I remember um, where I was, I was sitting on um, my porch and I was just thinking to myself, like, I really feel like, um, and mind you, this is all during the beginning of the pandemic. So I was also, uh, I had a transition on to online learning um, that I think I still had a lot to learn about my craft as an actor before I wanted to start in into um, another realm. And um, that ultimately uh, guided me to think about graduate school. And um, when I started looking into YouTube and um, different platforms of advice and stuff like that, I came across how to get into drama school. Um, and I came across Mr. Wofford's uh, video about um, his experience auditioning for Juilliard, uh, his monologue prep, uh, the whole nine yards. And I bought, I bought his book, which is a fantastic book for all of you guys that don't have it yet or haven't um, read it. It is amazing. Um, really helped me a lot. And it encouraged me to, to reach out to Anthony um, and Brandon and um, ask them flat out, um, would you guys be willing to help me in this journey? Um, and luckily they said yes. And, um, and then the rest is, is history from there. Then I just- That, that, that was a very energetic call. I'll never forget. <laughs> Oh man, you're like, is this guy breathing right now? What the Johnny hell? Johnny was awesome, man. And when we first met Johnny, I think Johnny called me or something, and and we had a great chat. We connected. It was fun to learn about, you know, his story and what he's interested in. And I said, all right, you know, before we kind of talk about coaching you, we need to talk with Brandon, right? We need to talk with, make sure we get Brandon on the phone, and, and let's talk about coaching you, what that looks like. And uh, when we all three got on the phone, man, it was just like this guy's Johnny is the like he's pumped. He's He's eager. He's serious. He's got a good vocabulary. He, he seems like he's uh, uh, ready to play and, and you totally were. Oh yeah. Thanks man. Now 
Okay, great. So thanks for that. That gives us some context. Let's dive into like this seven month journey, right? After you got on the phone with us, you know, you're, you got to get your monologues together. Like what monologues, like, where did you find your monologues? You've got, you've some knowledge of plays and monologues. Did you find them from where? Like walk us through sure. that. Yeah. So, um, my, my first two monologues that I had prepped that I showed you guys was, um, Lobby Hero by Kenneth Lonergan. Um, Jeff, which is a play I just adore. I love Kenny. I love Kenny Lonergan. Um, and then um, I had I had a pretty decent amount of, of Shakespeare monologues, but I didn't really know where to start because some of them I had used in classes. Some of them I just I memorized just because I thought they were cool. Um, my my Shakespeare monologue um, that was um, the first one I showed you guys was Titus from Titus Andronicus, Act Five, Scene Two, Great. Come Come Lavinia. Um, I had that from working on it with a uh, with one of my fantastic um acting teachers um tina banco in my acting uh three class um and i was really interested in diving into that um and those were the first two that i really that i really had um prepped even before um like going into you guys i mean not prepped but i had them in the back of my mind mm. um and then i also had a uh spirit control by bo willeman which i had worked on like years prior um and i never really i never really came back to it after that which is <laughs> it's a shame because anthony knows uh like this this monologue is a very it's a very intense one it's a really um really juicy one and i found a, i thought thanks to these guys i found a lot more um nuance and color with it um and i had that so those are my three ones that i came in um because i also love the material i love the writers again um and i loved uh that the the stories that they were telling with them. Um, That's a really good insight. Like you're basically saying that you were kind of looking in your past. Yes. Um, yes. For, for material that you'd played with in scene class or monologues, you know, somehow. Um, and you, you, you chose pieces that you loved and that you really responded to the material. A hundred percent. I know yeah. we've talked about this a million times, but like for anyone listening, that's important, right? Yes. Using material you love so that you can, you know, work on it for seven months and still be a fulfilled artist, right? Yes. I actually, um, to go off of that, sorry, I, I just want to yeah. say one thing. Um, one of the speeches that got me a lot, like got me far, far, far in grad school auditions, thanks to this guy um, and Brandon and John um, were, was one that I was really hesitant to, to do because of how well known it was in Shakespeare. I did, um, um, yeah, Mark Antony's um, act three, scene two, uh, uh, friends, Romans, country, lending my ears. And I think I remember, <laughs> you probably remember this, but like, I was like, should I do this? Like, um, and, and you were like, Hey man, like, and it's the same thing you say to all your, um, perspectives. It's, um, it's not about the material. It's about your relationship to the material. Um, and for me, I mean, shit, I love that monologue so much. Um, yeah, you can tell. Yeah. Thanks man. Um, and, um, and I, 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 you know what, I, I decided if I'm going to go in, I'm going to go all in. So I did. Um, so that was my, one of my, that turned out to be one of my leading pieces for a lot of grad school um, auditions. So amazing. Now, you know, uh, so far it seems all rosy. Um, so, oh boy. <laughs> but, uh, you know, let's get into the roller coaster ride a little bit. Cause Woo! Johnny, sure. when, when we, we met Johnny, he was pumped. It was ready to go. Uh, but, you know, there were low times. Oh, uh, baby. Humbling. Surprises, you know, walk us through some of the unexpected twists and turns for you this, this audition cycle. Oh, God. Okay. So, um, so I was practicing with, uh, with Anthony, Brandon, and John, for those of you guys who are just tuning in for the first time, um, hearing about them. Um, all fantastic, fantastic coaches. Um, and, um, and I remember, um, going into the uh to the grad schools because i mean obviously my this experience can be is going to be a little a little different because of the pandemic um because some some programs pushed off or pushed up their auditions um back into like december when normally they're in like january i believe um and the first week i had um for my first week of auditions was right before christmas it had um case western uh nyu grad and juilliard was at the end of the week um now, um, now my case Western one was the first one I had, and I remember um, the audition for that one actually went pretty well. And um, I, to be honest, um, and it's a fantastic program, but this entire process 
Anthony knows this. Brandon definitely knows this. And John knows this. My heart was set on uh, the Jewel School, Juilliard. <laughs> um, so I um, – and, and a lot of NYU grad, but mainly Juilliard. Um, and um, so going into that one, I had this, this sort of mindset – that, you know what, whatever happens, happens. This is almost like a, like a warm up audition, um, which is, I don't, I don't know if you want to call it that, but it was a, the stakes shouldn't be high going into these auditions. Like, like um, this is an end all be all situation. Um, and that's what it wasn't like for um, Case Western, which in hindsight, I think that's why I got so far with them. Cause I got, um, I met with the, the guy, um, the head of the program. I did three monologues. I sang a song. Um, he called me back later that day um it was it was a really fun experience and that's because the stakes weren't so high now um nyu was later that week Uh, um and again nyu is a fantastic program for those of you guys who um are interested in it and um want to get that that um that foundation it's a great program um but my experience wasn't uh fantastic in the sense that um that it just was a vibe of the school that I didn't think it was, it was personally for me. Um, and I remember I called Anthony and I was, and I was like, yeah, I'm not feeling this one. Um, I, I think it was, it, was a, it was a surprising experience for you. Yes. Yes, for sure. Um, and again, fantastic program. Well, let's, let's dive into that really quickly. Like what sure. was it that threw you off? So, um, so my audition was, um, was a little weird. And again, it's probably because of the pandemic, but, um, so I, I had um, two rounds of callbacks that day. Um, they would have they have us um, audition for uh, one faculty member, and then if they wanted to see us again, they would have us audition for. Uh, the initial plan was to have us audition for two faculty members, and then they, we would audition for Janet Zaresh if we wanted to be seen for the afternoon session. Now, <laughs> after I had done the first session, um, and again, Zoom theater, um, Zoom theater auditions, all that different stuff, I understand, uh, but. Um, they had pushed our audition, um, into our, our audition group into the, the final callback after the first one. Um, so we had to skip over the, um, the, the second one. And then they told us that we'll be auditioning for like a bunch of faculty members, including Janet. Um, and this was, <laughs> this was about like 20 minutes before my, my audition was like, like my audition was actually supposed to happen. So I was, that threw me off a little bit. Um, and, um. So my experience with them was was interesting. Um, I did uh, Mark Antony Act Three and Scene Two, and then I did um, Lobby Hero by Kenneth Lonergan. And um, uh, the uh, one of the faculty members um, said that they would rather have me do the speech a different way um, than uh, what I I guess I had worked on that day. Um, and um, for me. Um, and Anthony and everyone here will um, should know that Anthony, Brendan, and John prep you guys for this tenfold. But for me, it was, um, I guess I felt less that they were, uh, they were asking me to take an adjustment and more of, we think this is how the piece should go. Um, and as much as I appreciate that insight, um, I, that is not the sort of environment that I personally want to work in. Um, so, but I did it. I, I, I think I executed to the best of my abilities. Um, and, um, then they, and then she said, thank you. And everyone else said, thank you. And that was it. Um, and, uh, come later in the line, I unfortunately did not get in there, but in all honesty, it was, I think it was, it was for the right reasons. Um, yeah, and I think that you have, uh, a, a, you put it in a good way in that, you know, ultimately you want to go to a program that feels like the right fit for you. Yes. And, and based on your research and you're going to apply to those schools that seem like they're the good fit for you, but obviously auditioning for folks, you even get a better sense. Yes. A hundred thousand percent. I you, mean, I got a different, I got, I experienced night and day differences for me personally, the feeling that I got between NYU and Juilliard and um, Juilliard was a really, that was the last one of the, of the week. Um, and uh, do you want me to get into that one? Yeah, go for it. Awesome. Cool. What happened? Yeah. So basically, oh my god. Um, so, so I'm gonna preface it by saying um, I had whole I had a whole routine the night the day before that I was gonna do to prep myself for the next day um, because I was just nervous after, especially after NYU. I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this. Um, 
and again, these, these guys are so supportive of, of you throughout the process. They're, they take all your energy and like tell you, so you're going to be good. Whatever happens, you're doing your best work. So <laughs> that's always good to hear. Um, so I made a schedule the night before that I was going to go to bed at 10 30 PM at the latest. I was going to have a me day where I was just going to eat a shit ton of pizza, watch my favorite shows. Like um, it was going to be a good day. Then I was going to get up and do the thing. Um, and uh, mind you, Juilliard's auditions at like, they usually have their audition. They have a warm up at 8.30 a.m. So um, for me, I, I went to bed. I got in bed, I should say, at 10 p.m. <laughs> and I didn't fall asleep till 3 a.m. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> and I was so nervous. Um, and again, this is a whole thing about just breathe. I wish I, wish I had told my, well, actually I will say the thing that put me back to sleep was uh, my dad came down. He had this like, oh, God bless him. He had this like big thing of chamomile tea that he, chamomile tea that he made me. And he was like, you know, it's just an audition, right? And then having somebody else remind me of that, my stupid ass just fell straight asleep. And then I woke up and I was still so groggy, groggy. But um, then I had to do the warm up. Um, and um, so they had us do this vocal warm up, which was, which honestly it helped a lot um, that morning. But when you get a certain amount of sleep um like depending on like how much sleep you you just like it <laughs> you might be very groggy you might nothing can really work um help you out with that um for at least a few hours so um i was very very groggy i was like god like i'm not ready for this i'm not warmed up i can't even like my voice sounds shitty like i can't do this um and so anthony knows this uh thing that i do sometimes to really like open myself up <laughs> is I work out, I go to the gym and I just get some pump in. Um, and which is well, a throw thing. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, and again, for everyone out there, do what you need to do. Do what you like, do. Yes, exactly. For me, um, I needed to like wake myself up somehow. So I went downstairs and I just, I, <laughs> I hit a really hard workout, which is probably not a good idea in hindsight on four hours of sleep. So, but um, I had to do what I had to do. And um, it really did help a lot. Like I, I, but there was still like, like 10% of me that was still like, I'm not, I don't think I'm ready. Um, so Kathy Hood, the administrative director sends us all our audition slots. Um, and at this point it's after the warm up. Warm up ended around like 9.30. It's probably around like 11.30 AM. Um, she sends me my audition slot, it's at 12.40. I've done everything I thought I could. I've meditated, I've worked out. I did some vocal ladders that I had been taught in undergrad. Um, and nothing was working. Um, and 20, like 20 minutes before the audition, I'm freaking out. I'm like, I'm not ready for this. I can't do this. And then I look to my side and I see that my coat is right next to me. And again, I don't recommend anyone do this, but for me, I needed this in the moment. I took my coat and I just screamed as loud as I could into it. And it fucking helped. Like it woke me the hell up. Like wow, I mean, got dude. The endorphins running. I like I was able to get all the negative energy or most of it out of my brain. And there is something to be said about like when you're tired, you just don't give a shit. Like um, and um, I did all that, and I felt like like you know what? Again, whatever happens, happens. It's just a school. That's um, right. And it's literally like you can go at it again next year. There's no nothing saying you can't. And that all came to me in that moment. Um, and I'd done the work like these guys, of course. Help you, yeah, these guys helped you out so much. Um, I felt in that moment really confident now, <laughs> now, thank God I had that mentality because then they put me, um, so the way that they did it was there's an after the morning session and an afternoon session. I was in the afternoon session. Um, and in my session, there were about 30 something 30, no, 42 people. Um, and, a lot of people. Um, and when it's on Zoom, you can see how many participants are on the bottom screen. Um, and I remember um, they had let us into the room and they had like a chart on the, the screen to show us who was going in what room. Like some people could be going with like Richard, some people could be going with uh, Becky Guy, um, just naming the teachers I remember. Um, and then <laughs> they let me into the room um, at like 12.35. And uh, out of all the list of people, my name is first, and it's auditioning for the head of the program, Evan Yanulis. <laughs> Which is honestly, in hindsight, I, was, I shit my pants. But like, I was so, excuse me, I was, I was so, 
I was so tired and also, but just like so full of endorphins from just doing everything, like screaming into the cap, the coat that I was like, whatever, whatever happens, happens. And in hindsight, it was probably good that um, I got in front of her because um, I came in, she were, they were very sweet. Um, Evan said, hi, Johnny, it's nice to meet you. Uh, you know, the normal canter. And then um, she asked me what pieces I was doing. And I said, um, I actually did something different. Um, I didn't do lo- my big two that I would start with is Lobby Hero and Mark Antony. But then this time I did Spirit Control, the dramatic one I, um, I did with Anthony and then um, and then uh, and then Mark Antony. So two dramatic ones. Um, and but they're still contrasting in nature. Um, and I did them and I felt pretty good about them. I was able to just breathe. Um, and then they talked amongst themselves. And then um, Evan asks if I have a third piece. Um, and I said, yes. And um, she looks at, cause you're supposed to submit like a form of the four monologues that you're gonna do in the song. Um, she looks at my speeches and then she says, can you do Lobby Hero? And I said, yeah. Um, so I did it. And then she, they talked amongst themselves again. They muted themselves, I couldn't hear them. Um, and uh, she says, it was lovely meeting you, Johnny. And it was said it was lovely meeting you too. And they put me into the breakout room with all the meeting people, the ex auditionees. Um, and I got to talking with some lovely current students of, of the program, um, asked them a little bit about it. And, um, and that was about, I, that lasted about an hour. And then um, all of a sudden, Kathy Hood comes into the room, um, the meeting room, and she says, hi, everybody. So I have um, a list of people that were called back for, um, to, that they want to see for the afternoon session. And I ask you all that Right now in Zoom times, it would be beneficial if you could all turn off your cameras and turn off your mics so we can have respect for everybody when they see, which I actually really appreciate. Um, because when you're in person, that's the one thing that always sucks if you don't get called back. You see your name or you don't see your name and you're like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like all your energy just goes <laughs> like right into the ground. Um, so I, uh, um, I turned my camera off. And, you know, at this point, again, I'm telling myself I did the best I could. Um, and I'm also running on four hours of sleep. So just lest we forget that. Um, and so she puts the name, the names of the cast list or the cast list, the, the, uh, the callbackies on the screen. And it's just my name. Oh my gosh. I have never screamed so loud in my life. I think my, like you all probably can hear my voice is very low. I definitely hit up the tenor octave. I was so <laughs> excited. I screamed like I called Anthony. I, I texted uh, my parents. I was so over the hill. Um, I ran around. I ran around screaming Mark Anthony's monologue. I was just all kinds of crazy. Um, I was so excited. And then this, I'm celebrating, telling every, every like all my confidants. And then I hear after like ten minutes of celebrating uh, on my laptop. Johnny, are you there? <laughs> and then I, I realized, yeah, and then I realized I hadn't unmiked myself or un, like un- taken off the camera. And then I come back at Kathy and then like, I, I think a guy named Nolan um, and a couple other people are like waiting on the, on the screen. They're like, are you there? And then I click on, I'm like, yes, yes, I'm so sorry. I was just losing my mind. <laughs> um, and she goes, oh yeah, no, that's okay. We understand. Um, we understand it's, um, you're excited. That's amazing. They're ready to see you whenever you're ready. I was like, Great. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Um, all right, cool. So, um, so they let me into the room. Um, and this time, uh, this time it was, I think it was the entire faculty. Um, so um, I come in and it's not just Evan, it's Richard, it's uh, Becky, it's like everybody um, on the Zoom screen. And then it's my nervous ass. Um, and, um, but I'm super excited. Um, and they, they asked, hi, Johnny, we're sure you're excited. I was like, yeah, I am. Um, and they said, so um, so we'd love to see uh, your Lobby Hero monologue again. I was like, okay, great. So um, I did that one. Um, they talked amongst themselves. And then Evan, uh, the head of the program, uh, looks at my, sp- my speeches, which also, um, this is also a lesson for everyone. Don't just have four speeches, like have five for all your schools um, or six or something like that. I know Anthony had like seven or eight or something like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, it's because uh, you know, sometimes they might want to see something else and it's always good to have that. Um, and luckily I, um, so basically they, 
pulled up my my the list of monologues that I had, and Evan looks at it. And she goes, "So Titus," and I go, "Yeah." She goes, "Do you have another Shakespeare piece?" <laughs> um, and I was like, "Because I had already done Antony, and she doesn't want to see Titus, which I was kind of bummed about, but whatever." Um, so I was like, "I have Lewis from King John, which I also I hadn't worked on since October, but still I had something. Um, it's always good to say you have something." So. Um, so she was like, great, we'll see that. Um, and then I did it. And then um, that was it. Then um, no direction for that, nothing. Um, and then Evan was like, great, Johnny. It's good that you had that, um, that extra speech. And I was like, thanks, I think so too. Um, and then they let me into uh, another room. And then Kathy emailed me saying, they'd love to see you for the afternoon session. So, um, so I waited for the afternoon session. And um, there were about six, seven or six of us. And actually... Uh, one of the most talented uh, um, people that also got into Group 54, which um, is Mia, was in my callback um, day. So oh. we, yeah, 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 yeah. And we both had this like moment like, oh my God, like how did he get into drama school? Boy? Like, yo. <laughs> um, so we were both really excited to be there. Oh, it's great. Um, nice. So cool seeing her. Um, and um, so, yeah, they, um, they called us in one by one um, and they basically just – had us do some of the speeches again. They had me, I was the second last one to go. Um, and, um, and they had me uh, do the two, those two speeches again, Lobby Hero and King John Lewis, um, Act 5, Scene 2. And then they had me sing. Um, now, I know a lot of times, uh, Juilliard especially will probably have you, they'll direct your speeches. From my personal experience, they did not. Um, but they did direct my song. Um, which I sang, I sang The Rose by Bette Midler. Um, and which, yeah, I love that song. You know what? I love it, right? Yeah, dude, it's great. Who, who, I can't go wrong with B Mills. Like, I mean, um, and she, um, but uh, that's also a thing to note, I'd say too, is um, you don't have to sing a song from a musical or anything like that. Just sing something that like sticks out to you. Um, and I will say that song has a bit of uh, musical candor to it, but um, I still love it. Um, and I sang it and Richard gave me a redirection, which was, um, we don't want you to, we, we know you're probably singing this to a loved one. Can you sing this to yourself after a loved one has broken up with you? Um, which was a heavy, heavy note. Yeah. Good one. Um, but heavy one. So yeah. Um, yeah, they know they know how to sort of, you know, unlock things. They do. They do. And I, I will say, um, and this is, I think where I don't think I, I don't think I screwed up in any of my auditions or most of my auditions. Um, but I think that, um, I think this is a moment in hindsight I could have taken to breathe a bit more um, and just kind of like live in the moment because I think I was still on the adrenaline of being called back um, because I had auditioned for Juilliard years ago and I didn't even get a call back. So this was a big deal for me. Um, and, um, but I, I think I just sat down and I did live in it. I should give myself more credit. I did live in it. Um, but I think I could have just breathed more and thought about it a little bit um, because they're not, it's not, even though it's a group of, of the faculty members, um, it's not that big a deal. They're here, they're here to watch you do your work, not see a finished product. And I, um, I think I should have told myself that in hindsight. Um, no, that's really good insight. I just want to pause you there because yeah, it's like, we, we never know why you didn't get accepted to Juilliard or anything. None of us know why we did or did not. But oftentimes you'll hear this from people, you know, and we'll talk about your Lambda audition now. Yeah. Oftentimes with the schools that you did get into, um, you had this inner knowing that that went well. Yes. I, I don't know. That was just that that felt yeah. good. And, and similar to kind of what you're saying, there was just a little thing so, i was like i don't know yeah and they can they can they can this is not to be intimidating but like they can read when you're not i mean they they're yeah. going to teach you four years yeah they can tell when you're not not i want to say like in like invested but they can tell when you're kind of checked out um or you're not fully trying to immerse yourself and try something um and i'd say just take your time i mean i love the story about i don't think this is the best thing uh, I don't know if I would have done this, but like, there's a story about John, our colleague, who's one of the coaches. He literally like says in his Yale audition, like he had to scream at himself, go John, go in between one of his aud um, audition monologues. Cause he didn't feel it. 
do what you need to do. Like, obviously, like, you know, like some, maybe sometimes not, ju- you don't have to just like scream in the middle of an audition monologue, but that's what he needed at the moment. So, um, like I screamed in my coat, like, um, so yeah. Yeah. So um, you eventually heard that you did yeah. not get invited to the final, final weekend. Right. 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 Um, which was, that was a big blow. Um, that was a big, big blow. Cause, and, um, in hindsight, I think, so I think the mindset I had after that was, oh man, I got to get in. I got to, I got to do it. Like, um, and I think by doing that, I kind of, I letting it go is, is the way the business in hindsight. Um, like, um, and I think the reason why I got so far is because I didn't, I was so tired. I didn't really care. And the same thing goes for case Western. When you, when you, you, you need to care. Everyone should care about what they're doing, especially with grad school. But you need to also realize that there are so many equations beyond yourself. Um, and, uh, but yeah, but that, when I found out at the time, um, it stung. It stung a lot. Um, and then I, and then I had to do the rest of my, my grad school auditions, um, which was, which was a toughie. Um, it was a toughie. Yeah. Um, what, how did that affect the rest of your auditions? Oh God. I mean, um, so I had, I think I had three auditions after Juilliard. No, four. Like that, that month at least. Um, I had uh, the Old Globes pr- um, uh, program, the University of San Diego, UC Irvine. Um, uh, there's one more. Um, God, uh, I can't remember the other one, but th- those are the two that I do remember. I had UC San Diego. And that's, this I will say is um, I actually got pretty far with UC San Diego, but it's because after... I didn't get into um, University of San Diego and um, UC Irvine because I think I had the mentality, okay, now that I didn't get into my top school, I need to now get into these other schools and I got to go amp on these ones, which also you can never do that because by indirectly, that's like saying, that's like when I was trying to fall asleep, I'm like trying to tell myself, you got to fall asleep. It's not going to work. Like the more conscious you are of it, like (laughs) your mind's going to be the stronger of the two of you. And it's not, that's not a good thing. Like um, you need to, you need to redirect your focus to what can I do for myself to make these pieces more open for me. Um, and also don't think about, it's tough, but like try to put yourself out of the equation think to myself, how can I do the best work that I can do for them rather regardless of what school it is. And, but I unfortunately didn't do that. Um, and I think that's what, uh, bit me in the ass come some of these auditions. Now, um, I said UC San Diego because, um, after those, after getting rejected, by many of these schools, um, I was very, I, I kind of had a screwed attitude. Like I'm probably not going to get in. Um, and, and then I got called back <laughs> twice to, to UCSD um, because I think I had this mentality. I'm not going to get in. Um, and unfortunately that didn't, that didn't work out either in the end. Um, but I, but I got pretty far with them. They had a pre-screen, which I got called back for. And then they had me do a preliminary callback. And then I got called back after that. Um, and I think, right. and it, yeah, and it felt, that felt really good because I was like just being myself. They gave me a direction for that one as well. Um, I did two monologues and I sang for them and they were very sweet. Um, and I let myself breathe a little bit more there. Um, yeah, I think that that's kind of like what, what I'm hearing quite a bit is obviously like, don't give a whatever, you know, just go yeah. not caring. And it's hard for me if I'm, a, if I'm a student who's about to audition, like, what do you mean? How am I... How am I supposed to? And and I just want to say for myself, um, it, it's kind of like what Johnny said about re uh, refocusing your thoughts. Because yes. sometimes what what we get so amped up about is the audition. A hundred percent. That's what you got to not care about. Yes. What you need to refocus on is the work you get to do. Yes. So if that- you get to go in there, like let the nerves serve you. You know, the fact that you're nervous means you care. Like yes. don't try to be not nervous. That's just going to be like conflicting mental energy. You're going to get watered down by yeah. trying to fight that natural adrenaline rush. Yes. But if you're, if you've done the work, then trust yourself and give the gift. Yes, 100%. And also remember to like, you, yes, give them a gift. I think that's the best way to, to fr- uh, phrase it because when you go in there, it's not about them. It's about you. And I mean that in the best way possible because you're, yeah. you can sit, sit there 
take your time. I mean, I know some schools, like some schools, they, they do time your monologues, but like make sure they're timed to make sure you got them, but like, just breathe, take that moment before and in between your monologues and then after to just breathe. Don't comment on the work. I know in my prep, um, Anthony would, Anthony is uh, one of the, the best notes he gave me was just don't stop. Like, don't, don't be like, that was amazing. That's the first time I ever did that. Cause they, they don't need to hear that. That was the first time he ever did the speech that way. Just do it the way that like, just breathe, do what you prepped in between each sent, um, each monologue, each piece. And after them, just let it be and just feel confident. So, um, nice, yeah. nice note. <laughs> thanks man i learned a lot from it so uh well, you know and that was particular to johnny because johnny has a very kinesthetic um he's a great energy great presence and uh when he would finish something that was um he discovered something or he he really felt like he was super in the moment when he exited the monologue or finished the moment he would have his response as johnny he'd be like yeah. Woo, that felt good you know <laughs> Which oh is, my god I, it's but, my massachusetts side yeah <laughs> <laughs> and i was pumped for him but it does um you have to remember you're still in the actual audition so right. i was saying that's not serving you know ultimately your your work let yeah. your work just be the thing and don't get it in the way of letting the work be the thing so even if you're feeling super good about your work let the work exist and yes. not a new thought from you, which is commenting on the work. Right. Breathe it. Like, honestly, let it breathe, breathe in that excitement that you feel like you just accomplished something new or vibrant, but just don't, yeah, don't comment on it because um, they don't want to know that you, you just happen to have a good day today. Like, um, cause it's, like you said, it's the work that you prepared for. It's the work. And it's sometimes, you know, when they give you an adjustment, it unlocks something, you know, for me, for sure. I, I was asked to do something and I was taking in all these new imaginations and I got emotional and I cried and all that stuff. Just let that live through you. Yes. Um, and anyway, so let's go on. Let's go sure. on now. Because now what are we in February or something? February, and you got, you got February. Yeah. First week of February. I was, I was drained. I was like, we talked about alternate paths. Yeah, I was thinking to myself, well, I don't think grad school is the year for me. Um, or this year's the year for grad school for me. I'm like, um, and I do, I will say, I do have a blessing of going to a program that has, that offers a showcase and stuff like that, because that did offer a little bit of a net. Um, and I was in New York and I had already had some connections, but, you know, um, after uh, getting turned down by a lot of prestigious performing arts schools, I tended to, to veer towards, should I be doing this or not a lot? Um, and I remember we, I've had calls with, with Anthony, with Brandon, with John about what am I doing? Like, what, what should I do um, moving forward? Um, and, um, and I, I was starting to prep myself for like, okay, like, I guess, I guess I'm going to have to find other venues to, to supplement what I was looking for. Um, and then, and then I talked with my, my parents about it. Um, and uh, they both were like, well, have you thought about studying abroad? And I was like, I mean, kind of, but like, first of all, um, I, I had always been under the impression, like, if I can't get into a state school, what in God's name, like, would make them think that I could get into a school that's not even in, of my own, like, of my own country? Like, right, um, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How could I even, like, um, and I mean, especially, like, some of these, like, like amazing programs that um, – that I've always been interested in. I've always honestly been interested in like Lambda and, and the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art and Central and Bristol Old Vic. And, um, but I'd never, I thought to myself like, well, my connections need to be made here and um, I want to, to study here. Um, but then um, but then I was like, you know, whatever. Like, um, and also you can't put a price on your education and you can't like, where you learn your craft is where you learn your craft. Now connections are important. Um, and this is where I'll get into this with Lambda. This is why it's, the blessing that I got in. Um, but, um, you, you do need to look at the holistic, um, profile of your school and like what it offers you. If you're, especially if you're an international student applying abroad. Um, so I sent in, so the way that some of these schools work is a lot of them this year, especially are doing self tapes, preliminary audition, and final callback audition, which is what uh, a lot of these schools like Lambda did, for example. So I submitted, uh, 
I decided to just say screw it. Like we'll see what happens um, with it. Cause like, yeah, which I didn't know, which was funny. Like, yeah, I, I also completely forgot to tell my coaches about that. I was like, fine. you know, you know, you're not required to tell us anything, but yeah. <laughs> all of a sudden, you know, I didn't know you had made a decision to like, go ahead and submit to like, oh submit God. so yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. thinking like, um, um, yeah, I think it was like, um, it might've like, um, I think I was also just like under the impression that like, I'm definitely not going to get in any of these places. I remember I also had my, I, at the point that I submitted my, my, Lo my London schools, I was still focusing on UCSD. Cause that's, that was like the, the, the same, the, around the, the deadline was the same week that I was auditioning for UC, um, UCSD. So I think my mind was still set on that, but then I got, so I submitted, um, the self tape, um, and I got, I got a preliminary recall to, to audition for the, uh, for their, um, graduate program for, for classical acting specifically. Um, and I was like, great, like, cool. All right. Um, probably not gonna get in, but, um, like I'll do it. Um, so they, they sent me a, a zoom link and this was all in like one week too. This was like, um, like two weeks ago. Bang, bang. Yeah. 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 Very, very quick. Um, <laughs> I'll get into it. It was very, very stressful uh, that those two weeks um, in prep because I found out like on like a Sunday um, and then the, they wanted me to come in to do a preliminary audition that Tuesday. So it was like two days um, of, of prep. And I was like, God, all right, this, I guess this is like the real world. Um, so I, um, they asked me to do the same monologues though. So I didn't have to like prep that much that quick. Um, so I just, um, I went in, I did uh I did, I've been sticking with Lewis from King John ever since the Juilliard one. So I did that one. And then I did, uh, they asked me to do uh, one contemporary. And then uh, after the, the contemporary, they asked me to do another Shakespeare. So I did Lobby Hero and they asked me to see Mark Antony. So it was kind of like the reverse that Juilliard did, mm -hmm. um, which is funny. Um, and then they, um, and then I got an email the day afterwards from, uh, I can't remember her name, Elise or something. Um, She's who's the, one of the administrative directors of Lambda. And she said, we'd like to see you for a final recall audition. And I was like, cool. Um, and, but then I looked at, <laughs> oh my God. And then I looked at, and again, guys, prep yourselves the hell out of this process because it is insane. Um, then they asked me to prep um, two completely new Shakespeare monologues by next Tuesday. Now this is Wednesday. So I had to come up with like um, com two completely new Shakespeare monologues within like a little, no, it was, it was, no, it was the week after. So it was like a little under two weeks. So I had some more time than I thought I did, but, um, but it's still like, that's not a lot of time. Um, so, um, so they, they, they called me. Um, so I, I, and also mind you, this is all during my showcase prep for those of you that don't know what showcase is. It's like a, basically you get to perform in front of casting agents and stuff, depending on your program and stuff like that. And you prep uh, one to two scenes or a monologue. Um, and it's a very big deal for a lot of schools. So I'm doing this and then trying to memorize the hell out of two new monologues. <laughs> um, so it was a very, it was a very cramped uh, week for, for J traps. Uh, so, <laughs> um, so I, um, Luckily, I, I referred to uh, the wonderful, so Anthony sent me a wonderful um, list of on-college audition monologues that I could check in way back when I was even thinking about applying to schools. And um, I took one from, uh, so the two memorized monologues I had now were Gloucester from uh, Henry VI, Part Three, I'll Make My Heaven to Dream Upon the Crown, and, um, and uh, Comedy of Errors, Antipolis of Syracuse, Act Three, Scene Two. Um, and these are very two contrasting pieces. Um, and they might ask, they said they might ask me for two new monologue or they might ask me for the two old ones. They might ask me for another contemporary. I, yeah. <laughs> um, so it was a little, right. Little, you're just kind of going in there just like game for whatever. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing you gotta, again, with all this in mind, that's the mentality you gotta have is you gotta be game for whatever they're going to throw at you because they could throw anything at you. Um, and so two weeks pass. I had done my showcase really great. I felt, I felt good about it. We filmed it because we couldn't do it. In, uh, we couldn't do it live. Um, um, and then the next day, I had my my lambda uh, callback. And um, uh, so they they let me into the Zoom room, and um, and they basically there was this lovely woman, um, Alisa, who uh, basically 
was like, hi, John, um, we're just letting people in one by one. There's a couple of people in the meeting room right now. We'll, um, we're, we're all going to let you guys in um, accordingly. No, um, no, I like the British accent. Oh, yeah. Oh, you want me to do the British yes, accent? Please, okay. please. Lovely. So, hello, Johnny. Um, so, we would love to let you um, in as soon as we can, but we're trying to get everyone organized right now. <laughs> so, um, so, she was like, she was basically like saying, like, we have a couple of you that we're going to let in all at once. So, um, so they let us all in um, and it's a couple of faculty, I think it's like three or four faculty members and, and then the head of the drama division at Lambda, Rodney Cortier, I think is his name. Hope I don't butcher that, butcher that because I'm definitely gonna be up studying under him and he hopefully doesn't see this, but um, <laughs> he, um, but he um, introduced himself, said congratulations to all of us. And then he said, we're, we're going to call you all in one by one and we're going to work with you on your new Shakespeare monologue. Some of you just have the old ones, that's fine too. Um, and I think I was the second to last person to go, I believe. Um, so he called me in and he goes, hello, John. How calls me John, like my mom does. I was like, what? Um, he, was like, he was like, what speeches do you have for us today? And I was like, um, I have Comedy of Errors, Antipolis of Syracuse, and then uh, Gloucester from Henry VI, part three. And he goes, okay, good. Just start on over. Uh, um, and so I did those two speeches. Um, and he said, okay, good. Let's work on Antipolis. Um, and I was like, Okay, so um, so he goes. So who's this? So who are you talking to in the speech? And I say uh, I'm speaking to Luciana, who is this amazing woman who's uh, the sister of Adriana, a woman who keeps saying that she's my uh, that she's my wife, even though she's confusing me for her twin brother. And then she goes, no, no. And again, I think this is the Brits like sense of doing this. I don't want to make stereotypes, but he was like. No, 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 I know all that bullshit. Literally what she said, what he said. <laughs> what is she to you? And I said, uh, okay, I think a very actor question. And I go, she's the most beautiful woman I've ever met in my life. <laughs> and he goes, beautiful? She's a prostitute. And I was like, okay, well, prostitutes can't be beautiful, whatever. So, um, but I think I knew what he was trying to get me to. He wanted to be more seductive and more controlled because um, the speech is very much like oh love in, is in the air um so i did it more calm and collected um and then i did the speech and he goes okay good but you need to remember you're still in love with him and i was like dude i just did that I'm like, <laughs> um so he like then the, he basically so you definitely I, took the direction yes like, yes full, that, full yeah. on to where you like you know basically needed to keep keep a little bit of what you had <laughs> exactly exactly so i tried to incorporate that and then um and then he asked me to do it one more time and then i only got to after doing it three times and he said okay good 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 after the, the fourth start of a time because i only get the three lines um and then he said um and then he um he said he asked me why am i interested in the program um i said it's uh, a fantastic program i love the alumni i love uh the opportunity to study um classical text specifically because I feel like my undergrad um while it did offer a lot for me um I felt like that was something I was lacking um and I would that's what a better place to study than in the heart of, of Shakespeare um in London so um he goes okay cool 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 and then um but also at this point I'm like so tired from the whole audition process like not just the school but everything um he goes um he goes I like your cut of Gloucester. Why did you pick Gloucester? And for those of you who don't know, um, well, I don't know how you would know this, but um, but I, um, I'm i an artist um, on the spectrum. I have Asperger's. Um, and for me, playing characters with certain um, disabilities is something that I'm very, very interested in and in, um, storytelling from a uh, point of views, point, the points of view of people who have actually gone through feeling disabled in society and everything like that. So, um, so I told him I'm very interested in um, in playing characters that have felt disabled because as somebody on the spectrum, I know what it's like to feel disabled. Um, and I feel like Shakespeare does a beautiful job of regardless of impairment or physical um, neurological impairment, every character that he writes is beautifully imperfect. And that's essentially what um, disability I think is, um, beautiful imperfections. And I remember, I told Anthony this, there was a five second pause after I said that. And I was like, okay, I think I said the right thing. Uh, <laughs> and um, and then he and then he was like, okay, John, um, do you have a song? And then I sang the song. Um, and he was like, okay, good. I love. Uh, I think he said something like, I love how you picked a song that not everyone does. And I was like, 
these are like really weird backhanded compliments, but okay. <laughs> um, and, um, and that was it. Um, and then that's had- really beautiful, man. I, I think that that's a really great takeaway. If anything, uh, so many takeaways from this conversation, but one for sure is, you know, Johnny was willing to share something that he cared about, yes. not something that, you know, he uh, was really frustrated about and whatever, like, you know, it's actually something that was true to him. True. Uh, yes. Not, not that people who are angry aren't true. I'm saying like that was more vulnerable and a little bit more like, this is something that has struck me right? Um, based on my personal experience. And not that you want to like force that into people's conversa- conversations with schools, but you no. know, you have the opportunity to talk about why do you want to study here? Or yes. what is it that you as an artist, uh, where's your voice? You know, 100%. That, that's something that takes courage to talk about with someone you just met. Right. And I think that the most important part about um, being honest with with these schools is that they, they're, they're not looking for a specific, like, I mean, they're looking for, they're looking for somebody who's uniquely themselves. And um, like, don't, one thing I've learned through this whole process is don't say what they think that they want because they can also detect that bullshit. Like um, they a hundred percent can. Of um, course. Of course. Yeah. And also, you know, a lot of people ask us like, I'm basic. What I'm not unique at all. And you know, that's like, Listen, you know, I, I, I sometimes when I was in high school was thinking like, oh, man, you know, that actor that I really look up to, he's had such a troubled past and I, I don't have a troubled past. You know, I'm not full of, you know, whatever, all these things that sometimes actors talk about. Right. And I was like, you know what, you know, all you can do is just, you know, be true to what it is you want. And I remember yes. telling them, like, one of my goals is to do this and like that wasn't a fake goal. That wasn't something that I thought they would be interested in. It was just true to me. And if you're going to be able to bring in good work, you're going to be able to take direction according to what they offer and pour your imagination in, in the moment, and then talk honestly about what you want and how you respond to things. That's the best you can do in an audition, good or bad outcome. A hundred thousand percent. I think that, um, that a lot of people feel like, um, I was actually talking to my roommate about this. I think that a lot of people feel it's necessary that you have to, you have to come uh, to be an artist. You have to come from a dark place. No, you have to have, I mean, I think um, every person applying to undergrad, grad school for acting specifically or any artistic potential school is you have to have a point of view um, about Mm -hmm. something. Um, I think that's something that even before applying to schools, I felt like I had a bit of a point of view about like what the kind of work that I wanted to do. And I think that really did help me um, in this process. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, so, I mean, uh, you're going to Lambda. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still working on the believer part. <laughs> you are doing it, man. Um, so proud of you. You, you, you know, you're going to have a great time over there. Um, and for anyone who's watching, right, you can um, connect with us if you have questions or obviously if you have any questions right now, put them in the chat. But ultimately, this was for you to hear Johnny's story and for – um, Johnny to even synthesize it for himself. Right. Yeah. So uh, an element of catharsis comes from this whole conversation. I'll say that right now. <laughs> so, so uh, invaluable, you know, is what I, what comes to mind when you, you talk. So um, I hope you've gotten some value out of this conversation for those of you listening and uh, whether you're live with us or watching on the recording. Um, thank you, Johnny, for sharing. Thank you, man. It's an honor. I always want to be on this, this podcast. So it's, um, fantastic i can help out your viewers in any way possible oh yeah you'll be on more you'll be on more awesome we, fantastic we want, to, we want to hear more details but this was the overall journey and it's it's uh, hopefully you took away something or, or multiple things um i know for me man i mean what i hear in in johnny is like someone who's just he's got chops he's got a great attitude he's you know ready to go to the best program and yet you never know what's going to happen exactly he was able to take the roller coaster and just kind of somehow continue to kind of refocus his thoughts. And he never would have ended up here at Lambda if he wasn't staying present in the moment, right? He was talking to his parents all of a sudden, and that struck a chord. He was sitting on his front porch and he had a, an idea come to him. He decided to have the courage to reach out to us, give us a call for support. Things happened to him along the way. You got to allow things to happen to you. 
you know, so there's a, there's a certain amount you'll never be able to plan. So do what you can and then be willing and open to the magic. Keep moving forward. That's like the best thing I can say is um, whatever happens, um, keep a positive attitude, have a voice and um, just just trust what you do because um, as long as you do the work, any school is going to appreciate that and love you for it. So Nice. And with that, we will finish. Woo! Thank you, man. All right. Uh, have a good